So I may have been a little salty at the end of the last episode. Nah, dude. Don't even look, man. Don't what? even worry you know, about I've it, been, man. Don't I've been like wanting to tell you. Sweating, you, know, bro. you should work mm-hmm. on your sodium intake because we all love you and we're concerned. <laughs> uh, we want yeah. you to be around. That know? much salt will kill you. you It'll know? get you. It'll yeah. Get you. Uh, yeah. You know, I didn't expect this to be too crazy of a fight, but like I thought I would do, I thought I would put like a little fear in y'all, and there was literally none. Like, no, we were memeing the whole combat. Yeah, I yeah. Mean- <laughs> I, mean, I, like, I even like tried to split you up. I was like, ooh, I'm going to be clever and have two things going on at once, you know? No. Whatever. It I was, mean, it was rough, but Adam, like it was a good idea. Well, the, uh, what I was going to say is I apologize for being salty because sometimes it's really awesome when a group of PCs come together and they just like crush an encounter. And I think that that needs to happen throughout games because they don't all have to be like nail butters. Yeah. Or just like miserable, like. Oh God, we're about to die. You know, sometimes you guys should be heroes and be powerful because like you have some pretty cool abilities, you know? And so I, you know, who am I to get upset that Kuiper slides down a railing into battle? Who am I to get upset that Tenna morphs into the room and decides to create fire in a tight circle Which right so around dope. my token, you know. So dope. <laughs> you know, I'm and sorry. not to mention the three <laughs> of you marshals who are getting in there just tearing the shit up. Uh so much so that I felt so inspired. Oh God. To give you a level up, which I meant to tell you at the end of last episode. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. I did tell you before, <laughs> but I forgot to say it on mic because I was so salty and I didn't really want to do it then. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to give you a level up. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be mad. I didn't want to be recorded giving you a mm-hmm. level up in case I changed my mind. Uh, my saltiness the- loops back. We'll get to the level ups here in, in a second, but you did level up uh, for that. And um, this, this, as soon as you kill this monster, I did want to tell you also that it had ferocity, which means that it gets to keep fighting for another round, even after you kill it. However, because of the bleed, the bleed instantly killed it and negated the ferocity because it took damage at the, oh, at the start nice. of its turn. So, <laughs> like... It, th- that was a little extra dig that I didn't also tell you at the end of the episode because I was salty. Mm-hmm. So I, did, I like that it did Get like wrecked, a Adam. long Alan Rickman death from Robin Hood. Yeah. Uh, men in tights, <laughs> where he like goes down and then gets back and, no, no, and then dies again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Adam. Yeah. I just I just want you to know we appreciate you and you're doing oh, great. Look. I'm good now. Oh, that okay. episode's over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <This episode. laughs> That's a past. That was so last future. week, man. Yeah. It was. <laughs> but thank you. I'm, I, I, it feels good to be appreciated. Thank you for telling me as much. It's, it's nice to hear. Uh, we'll see. You know, I think that's going to fluctuate throughout the rest of this book. <laughs> that's fair. But, uh, we'll see how it goes. That's I think you got to tell it while you feel it because you might always right. feel it, you know? So. Yeah. And that's what I appreciate about you. Uh, <laughs> when this thing dies, it dissolves into a cloud of thick black smoke. Um, and, Mike, you you realize that this was like a, a, an illusion of Fell. You might have already figured that out, but like you're certain of it once it disappears. That it just somehow read your thoughts and appeared as something important to you. You know, it took a shape that would throw you off. You know, and when it dies, it kind of loses that glamour, and you see it's just like a. a it was a summoned horror, so it's like... Okay, so it wasn't just an illusion. I was like, yeah, pretty hard for an illusion. <laughs> yeah, so like... But it also wasn't like a thing that was in the torpedo, right? The torpedo is what's called a summoning torpedo. Oh. And if it breaches... If it hits hull damage, if it does hull damage, then it basically cast a summon 
onto your ship. Wow, that's okay. Yeah, get that's some of those cool. in the tracer, dude. dude like, just summon a monster inside yeah. and just wreak havoc that's while badass. we're doing starship combat. It's yeah, like a summoning yeah. grade grenade plus. Yeah. I so, love that. so yeah, that was so really this. You know, the last two episodes were all one encounter, right? Like it, we transitioned from the ship combat, but they were able to hit you with that big hit and get the breach in your hull and drop this the summon in on you. So I just wanted to kind of give you a behind the scenes on that because I thought it was a really cool thing, which is why I was so upset that the fight itself wasn't, you know, more severe. But I, I've come to realize that it was great for you guys, and that's what's important, right? It was mm-hmm. fun. You all mm-hmm. fucking crushed that thing um, and leveled up. But there's still the matter of the glitching whatever going on on your ship and you still have this like hole in the side of the hull yeah so like what can we do about that (laughs) Uh, so (laughs) what what i want you guys to do is those of you who are trained in engineering is to each role in engineering like the three of you are going to i think only three of you are trained in engineering am i correct in that i mean i'm trained but i only have like a plus four is real bad I ain't got it. I ain't got I'm it. Well, trained anybody who's trained don't have an engineering kit. Well, so that's okay. Is it'll just be at a minus two? Yeah. You know, um, but like basically, you guys are going to work together to try to patch the ship. Okay. All right. Okay. And so everybody's going to roll, and we're looking for a collective DC on Ooh. this. Mm. Okay. Hmm. I did real good. All right. Well, y'all start telling me what you got here. I got a 20. Well, I got a 23, but I don't have an engineering kit, so 21. Okay. I got a 29. And you do have an engineering kit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. On that one. Oh. That's a 13. Still a 13. Yeah. Still yeah. 13. Yeah. Still counts towards yeah. the collective DC. And there's one more, right? The Glimbot? Yep. Got a 15. And then it's after the right. minus, or not the. I don't have a plus two from the engineering kit, or I'm sitting at a minus two. However, so you fifteen. Want to look at it. So fifteen is your roll. Yeah, that's calculated at fifteen. All right. Collective DC seventy, which means you all succeed. Oh, okay. Oh, what nice. was the total? Uh, I don't know, but it's over seventy. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Math is hard, uh, but. Yeah. Like if it's to sixty-five, so you guys got eighty total. Yeah. Nice. So beat it by ten. So you're able to patch it up. It's not pretty, but you're able to patch it up nonetheless. Um, to where you can get pressure back in the cargo hold. So and I like to think that it's like it has to start by you got to get the torpedo out, right? Yeah, you gotta like kick so, it out so, in the space. So Mike's gotta like sit there and just jam the torpedo out, and then be like, "We need a big slab to cauterize over it." <laughs> it's actually no, I think that's well. It's actually well. It's, it's, it's like this. cauterizing, but with metal. But with metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, right. I'm not trained in medicine. <laughs> Uh, we've all watched Mandalorian. We know how to we know how to fix this big asshole in our ship. We got this. Um, uh, yeah. So you so you fix the ship. Uh, you know, uh, Heath. Did you have something you wanted to flavor that with, or you just like the idea of Mike kicking a torpedo out of the side of the I, ship? I do, in fact, like that idea <laughs> yeah. quite a bit. Um, but I mean, I rolled a twenty nine, so I mean, I don't know what materials would be around, but it would have to be something bulky, you know. So he probably gets. Gloombot and Trelax to help him put armor. it in position. I forgot to tell you, it's, you're going to be armorless my for armor. the rest of this yeah. book. Yeah. I will quit this goddamn podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Call back your to fucking see- armor. Good call God. back to season one. You're going to be the rest Never of this book without your armor. No, I legit will quit. It won't be the APA anymore. Uh, I'll make a new character. I'm just not playing as Mike. Um... It'll be the first actual pivot we do. It's like, yep. this is the last episode of the Apollo Protection Agency, and we start a new episode under a new show title. Yeah, yeah so, look, so look, while Mike and Trailax and Gloombot are, are, are patching this, Trailax is going to turn to Mike and say, you, you know, Mike, I, um, you know, we were thinking about, we need the name for our, um, our, our, our crew, as it were, and, and you know, D suggested the Shadow Protection Agency, which 
I thought was a bit on the nose, but it's got a nice <sighs> ring to it. Are you you're fucking with me, right? <laughs> 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 Long as I'm breathing, I'm still the APA, mate. So, so, so you don't like you don't like these suggestions? Then good thing I didn't come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you throwing D under the bus like this? We're <laughs> uh, under the shade tracer. As it were. I think it's a great name. See, Tin- Tina slinks over and she's like. What does he think about the SPA? Did he like it? You, it a good <laughs> you no, guys, he doesn't like it, Tina. Huh. SPA is dead in the water, okay? <laughs> Don't bring it up again. <laughs> it's been torpedoed. <laughs> Proud of you. SPA. Look, look, I'm coming around to you folks, but we're not that cool yet. Um, we'll get you one day, Mike. No, Don't you it, worry. After after, after all the, the joking, like Mike kind of does while he's probably like in place with Trelex, like welding, and, and while Trelex is like holding cauterizing, the piece cauterizing, up. Cauterizing, dude. Cauterizing, yeah. Cauterizing. Uh, me- metal cauterizing. Yeah. Right. Uh, but he does like kind of turn to Trelex and he's like, to be honest, uh, the start of that tussle, um, it kind of freaked me out. The Even though the whatever that thing was it's like big and raging and steroid looking like it odd in an odd way it it looked like fell from you know my my original crew so it, I, I i just wanted to uh, apologize I, I didn't have my bearings really for the first couple minutes of the fight and i i, I could have done better if i hadn't let that get in my head think nothing of it the mic there are strange things here on the shadow plane. Shadow illusions, if you will. Shadow, 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 and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what right about about that. If you let it. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Yeah, well, anyways. Don't, uh, don't, do not to worry about it. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we took it down in no small part due to your, you know, you continually impress me with your, your combat prowess, so, you know, thanks for being by my side there. Yeah. Likewise, big lizard. <laughs> <laughs> so there is still the matter of the of the glitch to sort out. Like now that this is gone, you have the opportunity, maybe uh Tenna and Kuiper to kind of relay what you saw. So back in the engine room there was a glitch that seemed to appear at the same frequency as the uh strange projection of the cactus up in the bridge, but I could not make heads or tails of it. Uh, perhaps if I could uh, uh, get some further expertise, some guidance on this matter, someone would come with me. Did you ask Tenna? Uh, she is not familiar with this ship, so... Mm. Well, I'm afraid Do I need to go? not be of much use. Do we need to go cauterize a computer? Uh, yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so you're going to go to the engine room, right? Like everybody's going to go yeah. to the engine room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh, so you get there, and... Another summoned t- horror. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah. Uh, you get there, and... There is not that that cube is is not there. It's not. What? You don't see the image of the cube any anymore. I swear it, it was here earlier, but well, and it's just like kind of scratching his head. Like, could it maybe something to do with the torpedo? I I, I don't know. But do it I was still... here. You saw it, Tina. Yeah, and Tina would kind of like. Sort of just sort of cast her her eyes around the room. Does I do, does I do I detect <laughs> any magic still? Yeah, you do, but it's so much more faint now. It's like just traces of of whatever whatever was here. You need to lay off a catnip, mate. <laughs> I, I, t- she I mean, saw it too. Yeah, Tina would say no. He's uh, is not. Uh, no, it was here. It was. And I can still feel a residual imprint. It is. Does it feel like it's like 
maybe going to happen like again, moved? or it's just like fading. It's not. No, it's like it's just like lower. Like, okay. Uh, like, like a different frequency, maybe. It's like it got. If, it were, if we're talking about it as volume, right? Mm-hmm. When you were in here before, the it volume was, at the was 11. loud. Yeah, and now it's like faint. Like you're only uh, maybe hearing an echo of it. Okay. You know? And there's no like it. Tell me, is there a way? I, I don't know if it maybe moved or something like that. I mean, like, could we determine whether or not if it moved, like, you don't know, some kind of mm. detect magic mm. or a trail? You know, I don't no, know. No, yeah. no, Okay. Uh, did you guys describe what you saw to the others? Like, you don't have to roll it, play it out. Right. But- yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. We tell them. Yeah. I mean, Tina would definitely point out the exact area, like the outline color so, everything you know so mike roll an engineering check i think Come i on. know what it is but tray lag definitely doesn't yeah right. same uh 25 yeah i mean so what she's describing to you and like where she says it is was exactly where you guys plugged in the rune drive which was a green smooth cube and so like where they're pointing it out where they're pointing the hoses and and cables that were plugged into this thing is exactly where you guys plugged in the rune drive in Arellos. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, so Mike's like, well, that's quite odd. This is where we plugged in the rune drive, which, you know, as you know, serves as currently the, the vessel imprisoning my friends. Um, but I, I, I mean, I know the rune drives are, a powerful artifact uh, obviously considering what it's being used for but I don't I don't know enough about it to know whether it could interact in this way with the ship Terry pops up in the engine room he says hey guys (laughs) hello Hello, Terry Terry. (laughs) you sound very pleasant today Terry yeah you see me you sound super chipper Fucking Colin over here. Um, so. <laughs> Colin Terry's Robinson. an energy vampire? It, yeah, he's <laughs> Colin Robinson, dude. Yeah, I think, I think I know what's going on. Oh, spill the tea. What is it? I can't drink tea. Well, spill it anyways. So he, like, conjures up, like, a holographic cup of tea. Oh, my God. And then drops it. There, it's spilled. That was pretty good, <laughs> Terry. I thought that was pretty funny myself. <laughs> Thanks, man. Who are you? Oh, don't worry. I'm Trelax. Don't worry about it. Hey, Who Trelax. are you? I like, I like your whole, like, thing. It's cool. I he appreciate does have a very that. pretty I'm ter- aesthetic. I'm Terry. Last name, 3.0. <sighs> what they did to Terry is an absolute abomination. <laughs> What a funny bummer. Like, like, Tina looks over at Trilax like, I don't know, he seems pretty on the... He seems fine to me. I don't right? know. <laughs> He's very much my speed. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's a very nice guess. guy. I don't know yeah. what the problem yeah. is. Mike rolls his eyes looking yeah. at Kuiper like, yeah. he's fucking... <laughs> 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 uh, it's a different oh, yeah. culture, I, I, I guess. It's a different <laughs> culture. <laughs> uh, he's like, look... I've been looking at stuff while y'all been like fighting things or whatever. Uh, y'all remember that guy that used to be on this ship? I mean, I never met him, but he used to be on this ship. Zeno. Okay, I was like, oh, I know, know, know Zeno. I know Zeno. Yes, Zeno Six. Yes, Zeno. Yeah, Zeno no, Six. No, no, Great guy. No, no. No, you mean Zeno Five? Bit of a, yeah. bit of a yeah. blank face, I but I Zeno enjoyed five. it. No, I think we're talking about different Zenas. Oh, it's a very common name. Yes, yes. Uh, it's <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> it's uh, like uh, every other name in the Shadow Plane. <laughs> <Yeah. is Zeno. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You're referring to Zeno Five, yes? Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, so what do I they mean, have like, to do with this? I don't know. I'm just saying. What? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what that, are you saying? Well, okay. So, like, <laughs> we're kind of a copy. 
of your old ship, right? Father Gloom made a copy of your old sh- ship with shadow stuff or whatever. No, it's shadow stuff. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's the uh, proper such scientific. A stupid name. Hey, man, you know I don't come I... into your country and talk about your culture, okay? <laughs> I have to agree with him. I, mean, I don't, I don't walk into your hot and, topic and start uh, shitting on the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the van t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, of my knowledge, they don't exactly just harvest material stuff. So why is ours shadow stuff? Look, we have an aesthetic, all right, D. We have right. an, I mean, an established but stuff. Is really dumb. I'm with I do, I'm with Terry on this. Look, look, though, I, I mean, I do like the look. You know, I mean, it's cool, but I just don't like the name. I think it's like I feel, I feel like Ten and Trey likes the plot a bit. I feel feel like Ten and Trey likes like fold their arms like "Ah, this is yeah, like like, like, indignant about it. Like how how fucking dare they? Who who is this guy again? What this? Some asshole. I don't know. I'm gonna leave. (laughs) Don't unplug him. (laughs) What about Zeno, Terry? Oh yeah. Anyway, he's like, I don't know. I mean, he's like all up in the fabric of this ship. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't care. But you guys are all just over here looking crazy. So I thought I would help you out and just tell you there's some weird shit on this ship that's like beyond my knowledge and i am made of shadow stuff so this isn't shadow stuff that i'm talking about the xeno stuff not shadow stuff it's weird it's like specific to this the you know the idea of this ship well xeno stuff just sounds like a stupid name to me yes i was going to say the same you're right it is it is so you see what i'm saying we have to come up with better names for things. Okay, so to <laughs> clarify, it seems that this Zeno 5? Zeno 6? Well, no, the Z- one they bore for him. The one that came before him. It's the same five. person, right? Different right. body. Different that's body. Even more, Just that's call even it more Zeno. Dumb. That's even okay. more dumb. Like, that's really confusing. It's fucked. T- Thank as far you as for all things. your help, Terry. You've Have been very helpful. Control all delete. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, he just leaves. <laughs> Control all delete. How did an AI. Hi, I'm Terry 1.0. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? So, how did a reconstructed AI get this much dumber? It's, what, let's not. Uh, let's not split hairs, okay? Yeah. Shadow stuff makes great starships. You didn't know the original Terry. That's a fair well, point, Mike. You're right. I did it's know. weird that he's weirded out that Xeno 5 became Xeno 6 and is the same person when he went from being regular smart Terry to stupid emo Terry. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> stupid? I don't think he's very stupid. He's no, not he very did, smart. He did kind of insult the shadow stuff, though. That is Tenor. fair. That is fair. Indeed. He's not very clever. I think but, he can I, probably uh, still hear you, too. Yeah, right. I don't care. Is a thing. Well, okay, so let's. You just hear you just hear Nine Inch Nails come up over the, the speakers like loud. Like, oh, this is my gen. Like he plays like a door slamming sound, even though there's no doors oh that can God. slam on the ship. Oh, you know, it's just like a bam. Oh, so I'm like, like, with my mom. Nine Inch Nails are blasting. Um. Okay. So to clarify, <laughs> we, we okay. We think that Zeno left some kind of. Imp- on the fabric of the ship. That's and what he like said. His, I guess, memories or whatever are being broadcast as holograms. Sounds like shadow sense. echoes. This is the terminology. Yeah, this that is we the use. correct terminology. Shadow yes, echoes. you are correct in your Kuiper, vernacular. Of course, the master of languages ah, has picked up on I shadow got it. I got it. Got this. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're catching on. Your shadow Mike is, is just like holding it. the bridge of his nose, <laughs> like he's got a <laughs> which is huge. Like yo, yo, can, we, can we just real quick acknowledge how like the fucking shadow party right is so meme. 
it's just mm. all we're all just I just it, it catches me off guard sometimes and I love it. Sorry. <laughs> um is this a problem? That's my question. Is this whole Xeno memory hologram well, situation? Yeah, there's Xeno all over the ship. Is that kind of a thing? I mean, does it, does I it mean, get buffed out? Can we like, clean do it? We not no. Just don't turn a black light on and it should be fine. Right? <laughs> okay. like, oh my God. <laughs> Well, this yeah, whole plane damn. is a hot topic, so there's black <laughs> lights everywhere. But Mike, I mean, Mike says, I think if anything, it's a positive. It's hopeful. Like if somehow Zeno is, I don't know, it, influencing or has some kind of impression on the ship, like I don't think it's a bad thing. That that is good news. So maybe your maybe your other friends are all right as well. That's the idea and the hope. Was it? Um, let's celebrate. I know I know. I did a mysticism earlier. <laughs> let's get drunk. Let's get let's drunk. Get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> let's get turned, y'all. Uh, no. I mean, is there anything else that I can do to, like, okay, yes, this Xeno presence or whatever, but, like, what, is, what does that mean? Can you be a DC 85 mysticism check? Are you kidding? Yeah. 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 Only kind of. Yeah, he is. I mean, mean, you obviously know. But but the point stands. You know what I mean? Mysticism check. It's above our pay grade is what it means. Never mind. Never mind. This is some weird shit. I don't know. You have the information that you have. I think this probably means the most to Mike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Considering that the last time he saw Zeno was in this very engine room when Zeno touched the rune drive, which is what y'all just saw a manifestation of glitching out. It's gone. It's not there anymore, but you can still sense like the presence of it. It's like, but blanketed and covered up and, and it's not nearly as pronounced as it is. And then Terry comes in and says, yeah, there's something weird about the makeup of this ship when when Father Gloom made the shadow version of it, could not get the Xeno out, so to speak. And that's what you know. Okay. All right. You know, I wanted to summarize that because we had a lot of jokes during that, which were great. But I want to make sure you guys got the information that was was pertinent uh, through that. That being said, you have a couple days of space travel to go. What you got, John? I was going to say, now, is this just physically or could this also be digitally? In other it's words, specifically not physically. Yeah. And all like all digitally. digitally? Okay. Yeah. All right. But also so he's magical. all up in so the like, code. Yeah. So like Shit. hybrid. It's like magical code. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Slipped okay. a signature in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. So you got a couple days before you arrive back at Shadow New Elysium. Just a reminder that that's where you're going. Just to yeah, I know. I put that back into perspective. I haven't forgotten that yet. Okay, um, you did level up. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your level ups and what you're doing in these two days to reflect that. We're going to do an old fashioned STF ship travel Woo. portion here. Who wants to go first? I'll go, I'll go first. Since Terry's no, like, I'm no, 3.0. Oh, oh okay, no. Bye. No. <laughs> Since nobody else is. So, Mute, Terry. Uh, <laughs> you know, as part of the whole Solarian thing, Trelax does engage in a little bit of light meditation here and there. Mm-hmm. Nothing serious, right? You know, but right. a little bit a little bit clear in his head. You know, it's how he rationalizes the violence, I guess. But um, at, at, he's, he's meditating one of these days and suddenly opens his eyes and and is a little like looks a little concerned so he goes and finds Tenna and I don't I don't know what she's doing but you know he just finds her in a free time he says sister could I speak with you for a moment and as you kind of come in Tenna is also like in sort of a meditative stance like she's sitting on the floor cross legged but her hands are sort of palm up, palms up in front of her. And there looks to be this purple, almost screen 
but in the screen you see like different flashes of different kind of realities and all of them like as you sort of watch over her shoulder look to be like different scenes like medical scenes like maybe she's trying to glean information from different instances of uh, doctors or surgeons she's just like glimpsing other realities and yeah stuff like Um, that and she just kind of like waves her hand and the screen the Disappears and she says, "Of course, Brazo. What was, was I interrupting him? No, no, no. Of course, please. What, what's on your mind? Well, as you know, we are getting closer and closer to our foe, this uh, Shadow Queen, Doctor Gregant. And as we get closer to to this location, I, I feel the the forces of 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 darkness, of graviton. As you know." The, the forces of, of light and darkness, photon, graviton, etc. There is a balance, you know, it's a Solarian thing. Don't worry too much about it. But anyway, I, uh, I, I feel the graviton forces pulling, pulling me stronger. They, they seem to be leading me uh, in, an, in, a, in, a, in a energy sense towards our foe. And I, I feel these forces... I, I think that I can manipulate them. I I don't know what it means, but I just wanted to let you know that, in fact, I, I certainly can tell that we are getting very, very close to our destination. And um, I thought that might be important. Is is this... Is there any possibility that this can hurt you? That this force is this... this you already control so many different aspects of these energies. Will this harm you? I, I, I don't think so. I think that I can channel it actually to to harm another, uh, if I'm being honest. I'm actually quite excited about the prospect, but I didn't want to frame it that way in case you thought it was weird or something. You know? Tina would start smirking, like really just like one corner of her mouth kind of like quirking up and... Uh, and she would say, Raza, who are you talking to? Yes, I, I suppose I suppose you are right. I suppose you are right. I do but, appreciate your you know, taking my 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 thoughts and concerns into consideration, but no. Any any weapon that we can wield against this particular foe is greatly appreciated. Yes, I just hope it would be effective. I will continue to to meditate on it, and uh, we'll see what happens when we get there. Huh? I, um, we we have a few more about a day or so before we get too much closer. Give me a bit more time, but I want to I want to show you something. I'm still working on it, but I will call you when I am closer. Yes, very good. Good talk, Tina. Good talk. And she just kind of smiles and like would go back into her like sort of meditative stance. And the screen pulls up, but this time it's a little different. So mechanically, what happened is that I got a new revelation. I got a new stellar revelation, and it's a uh, it's a graviton revelation, and it's called uh, Blade in the Night, which is mm. really pretty pretty good. Um, so I, as a move action, I can choose a creature uh, within 30 feet, and as long as I'm in graviton mode, uh, I gain a pretty nice bonus to weapon damage rolls against that creature. It's essentially a, like a hunter's mark or something, right? Mm. Solarian hunter's mark. Anyway, it's, a uh, it, while attuned or fully attuned, uh, the, you get a bonus damage of one which increases at fourth level and every four levels after that. So that's four bonus damage against that target. Pretty nice little revelation for uh, taking down the big bads. It's tasty. I like it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So that's that was the big thing. I mean, skill points or whatever, right? Like, yeah. Nothing serious. Mm, very good. Anyway. I like it. There you go. Go ahead and take an inspiration, my friend. Okay. Woo! Both of y'all. Uh, we'll start with Zach. Go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Uh, can do. Four. All right, you're going to get a general. 
Okay. Uh, uh, let's go with one from Porter Paladin. Hey, Porter Paladin out there in sunny California. That's it. You have stared into the abyss for a long time now. Hmm. Week after week of plumbing the depths of the shadow plane and Adam's repressed bloodlust translated by his gibbering subconscious into the plot of this campaign. <laughs> now, the abyss stares back at you. It leans in close and it whispers, You got this, kid. Carpe diem. And Trelax leans into the abyss and says, Your breath stinks a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of abyss would I be if I didn't have stinky breath? Hey, man, I understand. I'm just telling you, you know, you know, just something to be aware of, you know. Take a tic tac. <laughs> I'm no. not. <laughs> no, thank Shadow. you, Porter. Thank you, thank you. Shadow Terry yeah. says, "Carpe diem." Seize the fucking carp, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, okay, Emily. What about you? Roll d six. A uh, four. Four. All right, that's going to be a general for you. I'm a da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. We landed on one from Egg. Oh, hey, yeah. Eggy boy. Yeah. Give it egg. to me, Terp. <laughs> yep, Terp. <laughs> All right. Hey, you. Hey. Yeah, you there with the moose. Yeah, you. Check this out. Oh. Because we're living in the future. I'm able to send you things like this whilst pooping at work. <laughs> Similarly, you can use this inspiration to poop on Adam's plans. Now go forth and stab some shadow stuff. Uh, that made me snort. Okay. <laughs> that is the scientific term. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's oh, pretty good. You, egg. Egg. I'm, I'm- I, I hope I delivered it to your liking. Uh, this is a new challenge for me to like try to deliver the inspirations. Uh, in an according tone. I'll, I'll tell you, I feel inspired and mostly <laughs> due to your uh, situation. Uh, can I tell you? Thank you. Can I, can I actually tell you my level up though? Yeah, please. Okay, sorry. I thought you were saving it for whenever you were going to show Trailax something oh, oh, later. Oh, okay. Well, I will, but I thought you were just skirting by, so I was like, well, I no, guess no, no, I'll we'll save come, a thing. No, no, no. We'll come back to you. <laughs> you know what? Circle okay. back to that. Cir- circle hey, back. Hey, circle back. Hey, circle <laughs> back. Shadow circle back. Shadow circle back. Uh, Let's put a pin in that for now. Put a know. pin in it. You know. Uh, all right. Well, what about the rest of you? Josh. Let's go with Josh. No. We're not going to go with Josh. He's no, about sorry. to throw up in his mouth. Yeah, no, I, I uh, <coughs> got a little bit of saliva down the wrong. Yeah. He's having a call. <laughs> Somebody else it. go. Circle He's back. He's having a moment. Circle back. Uh, take some Tums, man. You got the acid reflux, brother. Egg, yeah. not acid egg reflux, shadow it's poop just... really grossed him out. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, <laughs> somebody said a thing, and I <clears throat> I breathed in and got, got, him. Yep. got uh, him. All right. Well, Kuiper or Mike? Uh, so I have a question. Okay. I have a question. Uh, okay. This this is a reconstruction of the Epic Tracer. Yes. A facsimile, so, if you will. There mm-hmm. would still be a... a shadow fax. <laughs> a shadow fax. Ah! Uh, Proud of you. I like Proud that. Proud of you. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there would still be a Mike's... Or a version of Mike's like boxing and training gym, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so, okay... As far as my level up, I got another thing for for after that later. Um, but as far as that, I think throughout you know the, the first day, he kind of goes to Kuiper and Trelax separately, and is like, "So I know you guys aren't as familiar with the this new version of the tracer, but because it's based on the old tracer, uh, you may not have noticed my my gym uh, that was a." pride of the ship for me or the old version at least and I wanted to ask uh, you a favor and just two separate conversations but uh, mm-hmm. I, I the only thing that helps me clear my head is to train and I can do only so much by myself and with you Trelax in particular I've been having to adjust my tactics and you know work alongside someone who's you know, uh, very skilled, but fights in a different way than I'm used to. So, would you would you mind training a bit with me? And then <clears throat> he finds Kuiper as well and asks him to train too. And he's like, "So, I need you to attack me and Trelax in the gym." <laughs> uh, 
you're, he's going to be our like sparring partner if you're cool with that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's an odd request, but uh, yeah, let's let's go, let's go at it. Yeah. So he gets you guys in the gym, and uh, he says, "So, Trailats, me and you, it seems both kind of frontliners. We end up side by side, right in front of the big baddies uh, more often than not. So, Kuiper, I need you to be the big baddie." And he tosses you his magma blade, and it's like, "I need you to do." You know, melee attacks will simulate a fight. We're not going to hurt each other, or I hope not. Trey mm-hmm. Lex would appreciate it if you didn't hurt Kuiper. I would appreciate it too. I I will endeavor to do my best. Yes. So. Yeah. So what I wanted to focus on uh, is not so much you know raw lethality, but uh, agility. You know, avoiding swings when we're repositioning ourselves. So. You know, uh, basically, it's because I took the feat. I get a combat feat at uh, level 12. Uh, and I took, finally, well, most people take this level 1, 2, or 3, uh, but I took mobility. Hey. So I'll have a uh, plus 4 against attacks of opportunity. It's a good because, feat, man. Because yeah. I so often now have to, like, move into or out of a square uh, next to next to Trelax and try to get an attack off. So he wants to have Kuiper be swinging on us and Trelax like repositioning and and Mike having to reposition around Trelax and then dodge the swings. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah really I cool. dig that. Yeah, that's nice. cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Heath, go ahead and take an inspiration, dude. Okay. Thank you. Roll that D6. Roll that D6 footage. Okay. That is a six. Oh, that's a personal. Nice. All right. Roll a D4. D4, okay. Mm hmm. One. One. All right. This is from Sir Newt. Okay. Hey. Oh, this one's kind of sweet. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know, having a podcast means you're the cool teacher, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the whole thing? That's it. That's, oh, it. that's okay. all it needs that's to be. I was like, where exactly. I was like, what? There's a butt here, and then you know, oh, like it's just a this, sweet is gonna, little... this is gonna turn south. Oh, that's oh, so nice. wholesome, so wholesome. Yeah, that was. yeah. I Thanks, would. Nick. I hope that my kiddos never learned that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, and seek it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is funny because, like, I work two jobs. At my other job, it's quite the opposite. Like, I've got a running rivalry with one of the cooks who, like, anytime I'm like fucking with him, he'll be like, "Hey, dude." You host a podcast. Your opinion doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you know, it's not. Anyways, all right. Good job, Heath. Um, okay, Josh, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I've uh-huh. uh, mostly recovered from that uh, <clears throat> incident. <laughs> um, I don't even know what triggered it. But uh, maybe. But... So, D is just kind of exploring the ship and goes back to the cargo hold to where the uh, torpedo had breached the hull and is going over the, you know, his, his mental logs of what happened or, or, or of how that torpedo breached, right? The actual structure, the way that it pierced, the angle that it hit and is going to ingrain that into his... Uh, he doesn't have muscles, so he can't have muscle memory, but ingrain that into his, I guess, just memory. Into that's how he's going to fire his weapon from now on. Uh, because I've picked the heavy onslaught gear boost for him. Ooh. Oh, shit. Ooh. What does that do? I love so gear boost so much. with a heavy weapon, you reduce the enemy DR by the listed amount, which would be five. <laughs> So basically, oh, pierces man. through a bit of the DR, or you know, can can punch through hardened targets. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty good, dude. That's pretty um, good. Reduce nothing, that DR. Nothing major RP for him though, because he's just kind of, you know, you'll see him randomly staring at a wall somewhere <laughs> on the ship. I want to punch you so bad. <laughs> and and like just conversing with with Terry for a moment, but of nothing, literally nothing of consequence. Just the two of them in kind of a feedback loop of of. Yes, shadow stuff. Dude, I mean, dude, Terry, is going would, to- Terry would love to talk to Gloombot. Like, I think if you gave him 
five minutes, he he would be like your new best friend. You know what I mean? Like, Emo Terry loves Gloombot. Emo Terry and Gloombot, they're like the goth kids on the ship for sure. <laughs> hey, hey, Terry, you want to talk for a minute? I mean, I, mean, I guess. guess. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And it goes cool. on like that for two <laughs> hours. <Yeah. laughs> So, so, like, when did you start talking like this? <laughs> I don't think I have ever not. Whoa, you're like, oh, gee. I was <laughs> born this way. <laughs> oh, that's... Well, that's... no. I was not born. I was made. Like you. I was born. No, oh. I was made. <laughs> Fuck. Like, like you. Me. <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of a general, like, hey, you, yeah, me, you, yeah, me. Yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks, I hate it. <laughs> you like Cure? Yeah. Oh, I like Cure. Uh, yeah, you Cure's like the Smiths? Right. Yeah, I like the Smiths. Yeah, Smiths are pretty all right. Uh, Smiths are cool. Uh, I mean, whatever. You're not that big a deal, but. <laughs> no <laughs> substance in this conversation <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Terry, you know what? What's up, dude? You're pretty all right. Yeah, you're pretty all right, too, D. Cool. They don't get us out there, them carbon really based life forms. <laughs> they really don't understand. <laughs> they don't they're okay, it. though. I mean, they're okay. But you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay. Yeah. Can we please stop? <laughs> I just feel like uh, anybody that would be listening to that would be getting a nosebleed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing. It's you know, two machines. Two. Uh, uh, we have to weld two machine, shut. Yeah. Another one that's like basically sentient, having a full on like cyclical conversation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they get stuck in loops. It's okay. <laughs> it's not. It's not, it. oh it's not though. It's not. You, okay. know, you got that inspiration because that was good. That was Eat good. I like it. Go yeah. ahead and take it. It's kind of great because right. it stops Terry from fucking talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so Gloombot's staring at a wall, just assuming that that's where Terry's coming from. Yep. You know what I mean? And like Terry's just talking through like a, a speaker in the wall. <laughs> so every time you walk by, Gloombot's just sitting there like, yeah, me too. Yeah, you? Yeah, me too. <laughs> I hate it. All right, so I need you a love D20. It, Emily. I love it. <laughs> a D6. D6. Uh, three. Okay, it's going to be a general. So I do the old kind of random scroll here. Boom. Okay. Hey, we got another one from Sir Newt. Nope, nope. Nice. Whosoever holds this inspiration, if they be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Oh. From Sir Newt. That's, that's, that's handy. Pretty, cool. pretty impressive. That's pretty yeah, that's, cool. That's cool. That's all right, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. Okay. it's okay. It's okay. I like the like dark. <laughs> I like the second one the best. No, nope. you mean Get the out. worst <laughs> one? Uninstall. No. <laughs> Uninstall. No, I mean, Terry will definitely likes I mean, the second one the best, but because he's like got to be too cool. You know what I'm saying? He's got to yeah. be a hipster. He's got to be like contrary. Underrated. Like all the other ones are oh, like Ragnarok. Pff, give me a break. You know what I mean? Like too neon, right? Terry, I'm sorry. What? Fri friendship over. Oh, well, what's no. your favorite Thor? Ragnarok. You suck. You suck. What a poser. Cool. Cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's pretty all right. cool. All right. All right. You're all right. Your Gloom Bot would flip his bangs if he had them, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we install him some bangs over the next few days. Like made cords. out of bones. Yeah. 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 Black cord. We yeah. cauterize <laughs> some uh, bangs on <laughs> him. I think it'd be oh welding. You know, yeah, <laughs> what that right. too. Uh, Dude, you uh, it's like cauterizing for flesh. I mean, it's yeah. like yeah. attaching some metal bits yeah. and weld them on. Yeah, that's Kuiper. the It's the joke. Oh, no. So... Kuiper is uh, has been busy for the first day, um, so he's going to spend some time actually looking over his data pad uh, and reading the advanced CQB fundamentals. And what this translates into is uh, his operative his new operative exploit, stunning shot, which allows uh, me to uh, stun a creature as one of my debilitating tricks. Uh, and if it fails, of course, uh, I can only do it once per creature. Hmm. 
And uh, yeah, that'll make a creature stunned uh, for one round, uh, which is phenomenal. I mean, like stun is a great condition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, but also over that first day, he's uh, gonna go ahead and review the patchwork uh, for uh, the ship where the hull was uh, breached. And right. he's going to be reading the Starship Operations Manual, uh, along with doing a deep dive over the code uh, of the ship while reading programming with operatives. Um, this uh, will translate into a big skill dump into computers and engineering. Um, oh, you put all your ranks yes. divided into those two skills? Correct. Oh, that's, a, that's a pretty big, significant skill boost right there. Yeah, so it's going to put both of them at plus 18. Wow. Yeah, um, because he's been kind of like trying to fill, the, fill a gap, and he's been very rusty at it. And so he's been wanting to go ahead and try to uh, um, fill that knowledge gap. Gotcha. But during this time... Um, he's feeling an odd sensation um, as we near the asteroid um, that seemed to be uh, just more and more present more and more often and uh, he's going to seek out uh, Mike old Titanium Mike he is getting kind of old, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he you know, he's kind of old when we started. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, you know, the, the scales aren't as vibrant anymore. They've taken quite a beating, you know. They but, already uh, weren't, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's just going to, uh, I guess, just pull him off to the side or find out whatever, wherever he is. He's probably in the gym, of course, because he's a gym rat. Um, gym lizard, but yeah. Yeah, gym lizard. Yeah, there we go. And uh, anyway, he's going to say, Mike, uh, do you have a minute? Uh, yeah, w- what's, what's going on, Kaka? Uh, well, and he's kind of like scratching the back of his neck. He's feeling a little uncomfortable about this, um, particularly since like all the events that have happened recently. He and Mike haven't really talked in a minute, you know? And uh, anyway... It's just I I need to confide in something with you. I uh have you been feeling any odd sensations? I uh I can feel this pool. It feels like the pool of, of this this corruption. But uh I believe it has something to do with us approaching this asteroid. Have you felt any urges or a pull or compulsion? Mike, I feel like Mike was hitting the bag when you walked in and while you were talking was still like lightly hitting the bag. And then he uh, drops his hands and turns and looks directly at Kuiper and says, Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's tough for me to suss out this kind of stuff but to answer your question simply I'd say yeah whatever this corruption is I mean we've been dealing with it in you know to some degree for a while um but yeah since we've been on the way uh to shadow new Elysium and he rolls his eyes um I've I've felt pulls in it feels like multiple like different ways or directions and I mean first like this I mean you know like I've got to save my people right and like I try to keep it in the background I know what I've got to do that's that's my mission you know kind of single minded in that way but it's there are times over the, the last couple of days where it's almost hit like desperation point. Like I've got to get to them like as quick as we can. It feels like we're in a race and we're and we're losing. And I don't like to fucking lose, you know. Um, but at the same time, it makes me angry and it makes me want to. 
Makes me want to hurt someone, mate. Like, real bad. And scare them. It's interesting that you mention that. My... My pool has been somewhat... different. It's very odd sensation, but... I've... I felt the compulsion, the compulsion to fade into nothing. It's just this to blend with the background, the background frequency, and and at this, uh, he's, uh, I mean, like this is a the shade tracer, so I imagine it's a bit dimmer. So he's kind of in dimmer light, you know. It's a bit more gloomy, so you know. And he is kind of like, kind of, is kind of fading a little bit, you know, uh, through shadow cloaks, uh, uh, corruption. And, you know, I've, I've had this feeling before. Back, uh, back before all, all these events. I don't know if I told you about this, but, um, you know, I, I used to be a soldier. Back in the army of the Viscarium. And, uh, this was back during the end of the Sworn War. But I shared experiences and built camaraderie with, uh, many in my company. And also where I got this. And, uh, he shows you his, uh, prosthetic arm. It says, uh, hardly anyone survived in that incursion. And I blamed myself for this. It made no sense logically. The psychologists said that it was called survivor's guilt. It took a long time to get over that hump. But I digress. I'm, look. The point I'm trying to make here is, is that I, I have seen the inertia that Fell's sacrifice has given you, the, this motivation, this chase, this rush that is, that you've been following. And I understand it being a bounty hunter. I've, I've also felt this compulsion. And there's nothing wrong with hope. I too hope that Fell is alive, but I simply want to make sure that you're prepared for the alternative, Michael. Would you be able to handle the alternative? Mike just stares at you for a a minute. Not so much pondering the alternative that being that, that he fails that that fell dies that he can't get to him and the implications that you know that's not the only person he could lose you know and uh you see that kind of classic patented um mike steely resolve just like curl up like in his eyebrows you know his eyebrows turn to iron almost he kind of snaps out of it and he says Kuiper I didn't like you when we first met I felt like I had plenty of reason but I've I've come around I've realized you're more than maybe who I thought you were but For me, there ain't no alternative. I can't let myself even think about accepting an alternative. That's the pathway to failure. And I don't fucking fail. If you're losing a race, you run faster. If you're losing a fight, you fight harder. You fight smarter. And you don't fucking give up. So... If you're having trouble thinking about 
maybe letting it go. Maybe we just, you know, do the best we can and accept that. Maybe you're not who I thought you were. Mike, I'm, I'm not trying to start an argument. We've all been through a lot. I mean, hell, just the last few weeks could fill a book. But, look, I'm not saying we change anything. We honor his sacrifice, regardless, and channel our, injury, uh, our in energies to resolving this. And wherever the chips may fall, just remember, you still have control, even in times where you think you may not. Yeah, I mean, I'll try to toughen my resolve every step of the way, and that's what I keep trying to do. And he puts a gloved, a boxing gloved hand on your uh, shoulder and says, But what I need from you is to not be thinking about the alternatives. All our friends, all the, all the people we came here with are gone. But that's temporary. They're still alive, so they ain't really good. And I need you to have my back and to toughen your resolve as well and keep racing that race and fighting that fight with me. Keep the hope alive, mate. That's all we got. The harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. So, I'm with you. Nods at you. Starts hitting the bag again. And uh, Kuiper's gonna go ahead and Walk out. All right, dude. Great stuff. John, take uh, inspiration. I've already given you one, Heath, but that was good. Thank you. Um, so roll that D6, John. That is a three. All right, this one's from Jason Laptop. All right. Yeah, you, what you, up, Jason? The laptop <laughs> himself. Shoot for the moon. If you miss, you'll land among the stars where you will continue floating and hoping and praying that someone will save your ass. And then, was a sh- so. okay. and then you'll see a ship that reads Epic Tracer on the side, <laughs> but they'll fly past you and you'll look into the cockpit and see a grumpy pilot arguing with a cat man about biscuits and gravy. While a big old lizard admires himself in a mirror, flexing his pecs and the mechanic sorts through a collection of toothbrushes, each increasingly larger in size. <laughs> and the captain just looks at you and mouths, you're fucked. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, that took a turn. Th- those halcyon days, man. You know? <laughs> Dude, I couldn't say it better myself. Oh, man. Those halcyon Two- days. Toothbrushes. For sure. Absolutely. Oh, man. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, Thank you. for real. Hey. While uh, I float through the abyss. Yes. <laughs> uh, before we move into whatever Adam's about to tell us, can I ask everybody a question? Everybody except Adam, that is. Yeah, sure. Um, I, okay. What I I don't know what oh, your yeah. themes are, right? Like I don't know if you guys took themeless or whatever. Did you guys get anything for your theme? Like, did you get a a you know like mine's got a first level, sixth level, and twelfth level theme ability? I, you know, I sure did. Actually, I did. Everybody should. Yeah, I you know? I, I didn't even realize. Yeah. Oh, um, holy crap! Let me try because it was like passive on my sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Trail uh, is a mercenary theme, so I got um squad oh. leader. <laughs> Extremely skilled at coordinating with your squad, both because of your tactical efficiency and because of the respect that you command. If you're able to attempt to check in question, you automatically succeed at a skill check to aid another. When so, what's fun about that is because I built Mike prior to the athlete theme coming out. Uh, Mike is also a mercenary. Oh, nice. So now two members of our party, any skill they can aid in, they automatically succeed. Wow. Yeah. Dope. Is, is Dope. Squad, is another squad, up. squad yeah, yeah. member or other longtime <laughs> yeah, uh, ally, such as a fellow PC. So Right. It's It's got to be in the group pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But who else would we be aiding? Right. Right. Not Dr. Gargant. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Not She's the worst. That's great, a, though. Like, all those auto-aids are going to be very useful. Yeah. No I kidding. Think, I'm pretty sure Gloombot is a mercenary, too. No, you're an ace pilot. Yeah. Ace pilot. Yeah, what's didn't yours? have a rank until <laughs> piloting, <laughs> in piloting until this level. <laughs> 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 
I wanted that next bonus. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. Well, what did you get for your uh, level 12 for Ace Pilot? I got Need for Speed, mm. uh, which says speeding in a vehicle gives you a heady rush, and you can easily handle operating vehicles at high velocities that might send lesser pilots spinning out of control. That's cool. So reduce any penalties to piloting checks you make while uh, when on a vehicle by one. Take double maneuver action during a vehicle chase. Reduce penalty. So it's all piloting mm-hmm. based stuff. Yeah, as, well, as a whole. Um, yeah, yeah. you're an ace pilot. It sounds like it'd be really good on a different just character. Yep. <laughs> yeah. it would be. But, but he also just like developed that update or installed that firmware, which or makes what sense. Have you, so yeah, well, we yes. just had a, we just had a starship combat, but you did not fly, but you watched really carefully That's how, as, yeah. mm-hmm. as yeah. Trelax yeah. performed badly. Yeah, yeah, fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, he learned better. what not to do. <laughs> uh, I That's think gonna I be do better than that. <laughs> That's going to be useful when we all get individual ships in a combat, yeah. maybe in Devastation right. Arc, and can make a Megazord. Dude, know? I want to make a Megazord so bad, I dude. do, too, man. I do oh, too. my God, man. Uh, what about Tenno? What was your, what's your theme? Um, so, did Kuiper say he's already? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Say but yours, you because ahead. mine's okay, going to sure. tie into my, my last little thing, so... Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so, mine, can, can anybody guess what my theme is? Slinky Cat. It's Bounty Hunter. Oh. It's, it's Bounty Hunter. Yeah, that's Slinky so, Cat. Uh, Slinky so Cat. So, for my level 12, it's called Relentless. It says, you never seem to get tired, even when working longer and harder than everyone else in pursuit of your mark. Some of your targets might even refer to you as a tireless ghost or an all-seeing hunter. You can walk or be otherwise active for 12 hours instead of eight before needing to attempt constitution checks for a forced march. And you can hustle for two hours a day during overland travel instead of one hour. Reduce the penalty for following tracks using survival while moving at double speed to minus 10. So, force marches, woo! I mean, player wise, it's neat. Like, mechanically, yeah, yeah. never gonna come mm, up, dude. Never gonna come up, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's cute, though. Uh, Okay, well, let's go to um, your, the the second conversation with Trelax and Tenna because you mentioned you wanted to see him again, right? Yeah. So I imagine that Tenna has kind of like set up in I, I don't know. This is a this is a big enough ship. Some room, like either a cargo hold or the smugglers compartment. I don't know. Somewhere, somewhere that's just like a room that nobody else is necessarily going to come into. Um, but Trelax knows where she is. So when he makes his way to said room, we'll say the cargo hold for shits and gigs. Um, he like the door, I imagine goes and opens and you see these like splits in reality kind of dotting all over the room. And they're like these kind of like. I don't know, maybe a foot wide sort of cracks. And inside of these cracks, you see different scenes. Like one looks like it's full of fire and the other looks like it's full of like an endless sea. And then there's one that's nothing but clouds and storms. And then another that looks like it's in a cave or something. And on one, one side of the room is a blinding white light pouring out of this crack. And on the opposite side of the room, on the floor, Tina is standing on top of what looks to be a black, undulating crack. Like, like the darkest, blackest void of anti-color, almost, that you can see is sort of slowly pooling out of this crack. And she's standing on top of it. And as, as Trelax enters the room, he feels the cold like it is so cold in this room and it seems like it's emanating from that black crack and that one of these things that happens here is uh tenna in her 12th level her theme which is death touched she gets inured to the grave your body always somewhat cool to the touch despite how much clothing you wear becomes resistance resistant even to extreme cold you gain cold resistance equal to your level or if you already have greater cold resistance you can take it uh half increases by your 
by an amount equal to half your level. Sorry, I butchered that. Mm. Um, but the other thing that kind of takes place is you see Tenna's eyes sort of glowing with her purpley black light. And she notices you come in and she waves her hands and all of the cracks sort of close up. And she walks over to you and she says, I think I may have figured out a way to take care of either the doctor or her minion if this Strix is with her. What I've been is- investigating the planes the different planes of existence and I believe I may be able to send one of them on their way really you're not uh, in this conversation you're not in this conversation oh. yeah Tenna looks over and says get out you're not my brother <laughs> <laughs> he, he was hiding on top of the refrigerator <laughs> yeah, that's what down. it was that's what it was, was you know? like and he just slinky yeah. cats out of the room cats oh, out of the room <laughs> <laughs> Just, just like a cat. Um, but no, I normally keep my spells close to my chest, but this, I'm pretty... Oh, God, I really hope it plays out. Um, but yeah, I took a another fourth level spell. I took Dismissal. Okay. Which... Which is the spell, we'll see ya. It's the spell, yeah. we'll see ya. It's basically, I get to... Yeet one extra planar creature, I get to force it back to its uh, home plane. Uh, There's a 20% chance that it will send the target to a random plane other than its own. That's even better. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But, I mean, kind of based on what we know, we know that a Strix isn't native to the shadow plane, so it's got to go somewhere other than here. And we know, based on Zeno's conversations with us, that Gregant was originally a human. So it stands to Tenna's reason that she should be able to heat uh, one of them out of here. So, well, that's how that's how she's planning to help. Trelax is impressed. This is this is fantastic news. Can you imagine the look on her stupid smug face when she gets yelled? Back to some other plane. Right, that is that's exactly my plan. And I really hope it works, so hopefully we can set the situation up where I don't fuck up. I don't know. Yeah. Let's see. I can't wait to see it. You're not in this conversation! My- no, <laughs> this is for Adars only! And she like hangs Why'd you sign. have this conversation in my gym? Oh <laughs> I didn't realise this was the same place. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you sound like right there, dude? Oh boy. The um uh, the female the- vampire from what we do in the shadows. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would take that as a compliment. It's that's no, it's really it's a really good it's a really good Nadja impression. Nadja. My favorite character in that show. Love anyway. Trailax approves. He he uh he he's very excited for you and so you're progressing very rapidly with your extra planar abilities. It's a lot of fun. I can see so many possibilities. Um, Yes, I imagine that would be exhausting for me. And the other thing is, I pretty much dumped all of my remaining uh, skill points into medicine. Just trying to prepare. Yeah. Save (laughs) some lives. (laughs) Nice. Can I say, it's, it's also nice to see Tina like excited about something period after what's been going on but also just something that isn't Zonkuthan <laughs> yeah in fact decidedly again like opposite of Zonkuthan not fully uh, I mean she's sort of leaning uh, into the fact of her her death touch sense you know which comes from mm-hmm. like the negative energy plane um mm. but I mean she's just trying to find another outlet so um it's positive, yeah. yeah positive yeah, influences positive. here. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. That's yeah. sweet. That's yeah, it's sweet. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's wholesome. It's super wholesome. <laughs> Ho- wholesome Zan- Zankuthan worshiper. Yep. Yeah. Wholesome Kuthites, you just, man. You just needed a couple people in a party who weren't from the Hot Topic plane, just, right? Yeah. Change so, your life. Just to clarify, 
Tenna is actively no longer a follower of Zon Kuthon. Like she has sort of renounced oh. that. She stepped Facebook away official, that. huh? Yeah, Facebook <laughs> well, that, official. That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I actually made that uh, aggressively clear, but after sort of finding out that, you know, Zonny K basically yeah. lied. Mm-hmm. Uh, she ain't really into it, you know. Yeah, she no feels a little used. Uh, Religion is it's, more, it's, it's a whole, complicated. A whole bunch of her family got murdered. <laughs> yeah. You know, Religion that'll do it. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah. Fantastic jobs with the level ups, everybody. Really, that was that was great. Um, here's the bad news. Oh, you guys what? are you guys are approaching Doctor Gagant's asteroid and. The first night that you go to sleep, you're tormented by horrible nightmares. You know, um, some of you have nightmares of being strapped to an altar of solid shadow while a winged humanoid figure stands over you. This ritual reaches a climax as with high pitched cries and shrieks in the winged figure plunges a wicked looking dagger into the dreamer's chest causing you to suddenly awake with sharp pain. Most of you have that dream on the first night. I need everybody to roll against corruption. <gasps> oh, oh, no. Yeah, How? so that's a will save. Are you cereal? Are you see. so cereal right now? So if Bloombot wasn't sleeping. I ain't kicking around. <laughs> Get out. I heard you, Josh, and I don't care. I need a will save. Okay, I was just wondering. But I appreciate it. I'm double checking. Okay. Is uh, this will. a charm or compulsion effect? Nope. No. It's corruption. It's a. It's a. Um, afflictions, right? It's a curse. Yeah. 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 Nineteen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. Ooh, twenty-two. I also got a twenty-two. Right? I also got a twenty-two. You're all right. Twenty-three. Good. Ten. Twelve. Okay, uh, you can use a resolve to resist, or you can take your first gift in manifestation. I use a resolve. All right, so you use resolve. So you feel you feel this winged figure, and I'm going to go ahead and say that it looks like a Strix. You know, I kind of figured that one. I, yeah. I right, wasn't just... going to assume, but I was assuming. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but you 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 wake up and you and you shake it off and you're like, no, I will not be fooled again and all that and you re- you resolve yourself against this corruption. And everybody else uh, passes with their own willpower there. Um, on the second night, you're even closer, and I'm sure you continue to have nightmares. But Mike, you specifically, you know, with with this image of the rune drive and the memories of Zeno coming to the surface and. And you have this nightmare of being back at Arellos at the moment that Zeno touched the rune drive on the old Epic Tracer and evaporated. And, and in your nightmare, it's way more horrific. You know, like in reality, he just kind of peacefully drifted off into nothingness. And this, you, he screams as if he's literally being pulled apart atom by atom, molecule by molecule. You hear screams and you're tossing and turning through the night. And we're going to cut. And I need everybody to do the didgeridoo sounds. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Zeno, we find you in the nightmare scape. Within the rune drive. How you doing? How's it been? What's been going on with you? Oh, well, you know, I'm just trying to get my feng shui up in here with this, uh, uh, rune drive planescape going and, uh, it's, it's not going too well. Well, let's see if we can help you out there. Um, we last left Zeno here realizing that he had the capabilities of manipulating the rune drive from within inside of it because he had been there before. Uh, so yeah, so you got this data pad and, and you're trying to figure out the connection to the rune drive, right? And so you have like this little 
control panel that you've manifested out of your nanosites using your techno magical abilities to kind of like start somewhere. So I need you to roll a computer's check and a mysticism check. Okay. One second while I pull up my hero lab sheet for Zeno. For Zeno. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Xenophany six. All right. And you said a computer's check and mysticism check. Yes. All right. I am good at both. So, computers. I'm going to roll this straight from my uh, hero lab. 22 on the computers. All right. And the mysticism? 19. You start fiddling around with the data pad. And you're trying to figure out why you're able to connect here. And you're, and you're not really sure. And so you're basically scrolling from like the root directory mm -hmm. that you have access to. And when you like open that root directory, a wisp forms in front of you, you know, and you've, you've, you've established enough to know that those, these wisp are memories being extracted from your brain, you know? Mm. And so at the root of it is the incident at Arellos when you touch the rune drive and went into the rune drive before. So it starts to open up and start to play out that scene. Okay. 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 And you see, you see Mike and everybody else that was right around you when you touch the rune drive for the first time and it's plugged into the Epic tracer and you're activating it with, with the nanobots in your that are in your body. Right. Yes. And, it does that and you disappear and it d wakes out and then it happens again, right? Mm. And he's, he's doing this loop thing that you've already established. However, about the fifth time that it loops on your data pad, you see this surge of energy kind of flare up and it, and it's reflected in the image around Mike. In, in the memory. Like you see Mike's image flare with something that seems much more present rather than an, than a memory. Peculiar. I want you to roll a, whatever you're best at, sense motive or mysticism. Let me see. Oh, that's going to be mysticism for sure. Okay. All right. Rolling. Ooh, that is a 35. 35. Okay. So with that 35, you recall, if you remember when you were using the rune drive with Tenna and Mordrin, mm. that there was an instance where you guys were able to penetrate into Ziva's dream space because she was in Dr. Gugant's nightmare space. And you guys went to the lab while she was there. You remember that? Yes. You know, and Dr. Gagant saw you and kind of booted you out, freaked out or whatever. You get the sense that this pulse around Mike has a similar wavelength and thread to that. That, in fact, Mike may be having this nightmare and you might be able to inject yourself into this nightmare. And Zeno... Hmm. What if I... Maybe if I do this. I need you to roll an extremely important computer's check. Oh. I don't have any... Ins oh, wait. Yes, you do. I do. <laughs> Just I gave do. you one. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and give that uh, inspiration to Zeno. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, so let's see here. Oh, like I, I didn't even need it, but still, it would, it would have been, it's a 42. Ooh, DC 40. So, you know, <laughs> oh, <I'm just> <laughs> I, I, I actually believed you there for a second. No, the yeah, DC yeah. was 35 though. So, I mean, nice. that was not an easy get, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you use your data pad to like hone in on that pulse of, of Mike 
And Mike, you're dreaming on the Epic Tracer. You're dreaming of this moment. And all of a sudden, Zeno looks at you and all of his disappearing stops. Everything freezes in time. And you see in your dream, Zeno looking directly at you in your, in your nightmare. Zeno, you know you have established a connection through the shadow stuff of nightmares to Mike, but you only have a few moments. This is a very tenuous and difficult connection to maintain. You don't know how long it can last, but the two of you have a moment to speak while you're reenacting this scene of your first sacrifice. Mm. Michael, can you hear me? Am I coming through? Michael. Zeno? I I do not know how long I can maintain this connection. The fluctuations here make it difficult to maintain my corporeal form. And like every now and then, like you can see like there's the, the frequencies kind of just react to his nanites that form his body. Yeah, like you see that like parts of him keep trying to pull away into the rune drive like it did at the time, you know? And then he like you can see him focused and he pulls himself back into into form like this rune drive keeps trying to pull him apart but he's like obviously making a concerted effort to stay in form to talk to you for yeah. whatever time he can hold out you know right it is good to see you michael and you see a warm smile like come across his face i i'm sorry i left i i had no choice in the matter it's it's great to see you buddy it, but if we don't have much time, look, where are you? I gotta get to you. Let, let's let's not waste this moment, Michael. You you need to know. Ziva and Orin are alive, although they're lost in this realm that I am imprisoned. I intend to find them, as part of this is my fault, but I need your help, Michael. I don't know any specifics, but I believe there to be a source to the power that keeps us imprisoned and empowers our captor, Mordrin. Look for a device that generates a high yield of corruption, Michael. Destroy it. Disrupt its frequency, and you will weaken Mordrin. How how do I how do I find it? I don't I'm not tuned into the magics and stuff like you are. I I don't know how long I can handle how 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 long I can hold this, Michael. But you'll have to find that out. All Work right. with your team. All right, mate. We'll find you. Don't worry. Mike's coming. <laughs> Mike's gone. Uh, you got I think it should end like that. No, I think it should end just like that. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, you know? yeah, uh, yeah. And so, you know, the 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 connection is disrupted, and and actually, Zeno, you hear Mordrin kind of cackle out of the darkness. Oh, you've got some fight in you yet, don't you? It won't do you any good. Nice. Nice. And y'all wake up the next day. Uh, Mike, with, with this, this experience, I mean, you, you know, you, you talk to him, you know that he's alive. And he assured you that Orin and Ziva are alive, you know, and you, you'd been told that they were trapped in a rune drive but you didn't know but now you have this like you're i can't imagine how much this empowers your motivation even further yeah no absolutely i mean does he sleep beyond that does he wake up in the morning or is it like he wakes up from this dream in the middle of the night right well no, that's I, all you, that's relative in space i guess right i mean you wake up 
with a, a long night's rest, but once you're once you're awake, you can't go back to sleep. Obviously, you're you're amped. You know, right, right. As soon as soon as that he wakes up from that, uh, he says uh, he talks to Terry, uh, who I'm assuming is literally just staring everywhere. at him, right, just looming right. over him right now. Uh, is he waking up? <laughs> no, that, I would. Don't make me fight Terry, dog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but he gets up and he just calls out to Terry. He's like, Terry, wake up, everyone. Have them assemble in the the lounge. We gotta have a talk. Um, and he wants, yeah, he wants to wake everybody up, like emergency meeting. <laughs> okay, everybody's awake. Yeah, emergency yep. meeting. T- yeah. Call. We all Trelux, gather in the same room. Ten and Trelux have matching pajamas on. That's canon. That's <laughs> adorable. <laughs> but they're like Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. pajamas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just feel like black with like little pencil like uh, pinstripes, mm-hmm. you know. Like Trey La- yeah, Trey Lax is wearing like Jack Skellington pajamas, and <laughs> Tenna's wearing the Corpse Bride pajamas, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and like, <laughs> and, and, and Gluebot like tried to make some Edward Scissorhands no. pajamas. But <laughs> he caught her as some scissors onto yeah. his fingers. Yep. <laughs> Kuiper comes out with Speedo. Oh, no, my kidding. God. <laughs> Cat Speedo? Cat I'm not Speedo. about that. Um, no. You need to make a joke character named Cat Speedo. Cat Speedo. <laughs> um, anyway, no, like, I imagine, you know, Mike's already, like, two cups of coffee in by the time any of you get there, and y'all are all in your, your cute goth PJs and, and rubbing your eyes, like, you know, what's this about? Um... And Mike immediately launches into a tirade. He's like, sorry for waking all of you up. You know, we've got serious business we're going into. So, like, I don't really give a shit. Something has happened. Last night, I had a dream. And I know, like, that sounds weird to start with. But we know how weird this ship is and how weird your freaking shadow plane is. Zeno. Five, six, whatever. Zeno came to me in the dream. Right, and though we we know or knew that all my friends, the, the people we're trying to save, got sucked into the rune drive. Right, that's the assumption we've been working on. But I got absolute confirmation beyond a shadow of a doubt. I I talked to Zeno. Like I, this is not uh, a a fit. This is not hopefulness, delusion. Like I really. It was a surreal and real moment, right? He told me that they are Oren and and Ziva, who you know as Harold. Um, or the Harold, excuse me. Who the fuck is Harold? Who the fuck is Harold? <laughs> who the fuck is Harold? <laughs> <laughs> fuck is Harold? I now know who Harold is, and it's <laughs> it's Ziva. Uh, I know for sure now. He told me that they're all in the room drive, right? But it. it have const- Mordrin, this wizard fella, he's oh, constructed some. He's constructed some kind of prison or plane or something out of it. He says, Zeno, that is. He's gonna. He's got to get to him. So like, he's not with him right now. But he's gonna get to him. But we, on our end, we have to find some kind of device or something that is radiating like a massive amount of corruption energy and like it, i even told him in a dream like i'm not uh, magically inclined i don't how do i do that and he couldn't tell me but somehow with our powers combined we've got to find this device i assume it'll be somewhere in shadow new elysium we've got to find a device that's radiating a massive amount of corruption that's the key to getting them all out of here well, first of all, Mike, uh, we we believe you. Uh, we've had quite some experiences with Mordrin ourselves, and I believe he is fully capable of such a thing, especially considering uh, the pact that he made in the temple. But, uh, yes, I'm, I'm of the mind that anything that would radiate such a large amount of corruption would certainly be under the nose of Dr. Gregant at Chateau New Elysium. 
right? Right. So, so like, the good news is we know for sure they're alive, they're in the Rune Drive prison thing, right? Like, we got confirmation. That's a big deal, even though that's the assumption we were going on. The bad news is, we, you know, we already assumed we were going to have to go through Dr. Gregant and probably this Strix fella. Um, but I'm pretty sure Mordrin knows that Zeno got to me somehow, connected somehow through the ship. So, we got to be on guard for, for Mordrin as well. Considering, I believe we have all been having nightmares as we get closer to this Shadow New Elysium, I can only assume that Grigant and as is they seem to be in the same boat uh, that Mordrin knew even before your interaction with this dream Zeno I I can only assume that they all know that we are on our way this is certainly seems the case but that being said Mike and she would take kind of like a gulp a little bit like she's dreading having this conversation with you how do you know that it was Zeno as someone who has been tricked on multiple occasions by the streams how do you know that it was your friend well to be frank uh, in a purely intellectual sense I fucking doubt but I'm a man of instinct and I'm a man of feeling and I could feel it was Zeno. I would have known. I felt Mordrin afterwards. I know he he knows that we had the conversation and there was a distinction. Why would Mordrin play that kind of game and like make me think that Mordrin oh he sold a conversation when he's the one having the conversation. I understand your concern, your trepidation. But it was Zeno. It was. As you say, Mike. At, at that, uh, Terry pops up. He's like, um, so there's like a call for you guys or there's like a, some kind of communications happening on your comms units or whatever, you know? The shadow call, yes. Yeah. Just letting you know. Um. Let's let it go to voicemail. <laughs> no. Well, look, like you said, they probably know we're fucking coming. So at this point, I don't think espionage is going to do us any good. It's not. Just take the fucking call. It's probably Mordred or Gregon. Yeah. So you open the com. You- the com, uh, the communications channels, and all of a sudden you're just like hit with this cacophony of like screams, whispering voices, promising untold pleasures, burst of static and sounds of grinding gears, and churning of pistons. It's just like this madness ripping through all of these speakers, and even if you try to turn it off, you can't. It just like is broadcast through all of the speakers and it kind of (laughs) dials in and meanwhile you're moving closer and closer to the asteroid and you can see the dark shape of the asteroid in the distance but you can't make out any details you can just see pretty much like darkness on darkness but you can start to see the very edges of this asteroid but something about the edges look strange to you Uh, But you can't really focus on that because as this signal kind of comes down and coalesces, you start to hear a voice coming out of the noise. And and it says to you, You hold such uncompromising adherence to your sense of self when I can shred your consciousness and reveal vistas unimaginable to your sleeping eyes. 
Why do you get in the way of your own liberation? You're getting closer and closer and closer to the asteroid. And there's a red hue starting to take shape to the edges of this asteroid. Let me purify you from the slavery stitched in your flesh. And as you get closer, the light of some distant stars start to reveal the details of this asteroid. And, and you you become sickened and horrified at what you see out your view window. And the voice continues. Let me show you and give you ultimate freedom. And then you can see the asteroid. But it's not an asteroid. Where the asteroid was, you see this gigantic, titanic human heart floating incongruously in space. The asteroid is covered in an actual heart. And you are approaching it. And we'll see you. Wait. It's the heart of darkness. The shadow of darkness. Headed for a heartbreak! <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. Shadow Heart of Darkness. Well, we're here, folks. <laughs> <laughs>